Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about solving quadratics with non-real solutions. These are going to be your solutions where you end up with a negative number underneath a square root, and we have to take the imaginary out, the i for the negative one. We're going to look at three different types of solving where this can happen. So the first, we'll solve this one through the square root method, looking at what happens when you have a non-real solution. The next one, we'll solve this one using the quadratic formula, and we'll end up with a non-real solution. And then the last one is completing the square, where we end up with a non-real solution. If you have not viewed each of these videos first, the square root, quadratic formula and completing the square, then solving it with non-real solutions is probably not going to make a lot of sense. So I encourage you to go watch each of these videos first to have a good understanding before you start trying to tackle when you have an imaginary number thrown in. Um, but let's get started. We're going to solve this one using the square root method. So remember with our square root method, that's where we want to get our x squared completely alone on one side of the equation. This is a great method to use. Notice that our b is 0. So square root method is going to be a really great method to use. So let's get my x squared alone. The first thing I'd want to do is add 7 to both sides. And when I do that, it cancels out here. I've got 5x squared equals negative 72 plus 7. That's going to give me 60, negative 65. Okay, using my inverse operations now, I would recognize that this is 5 times x squared. And I want to get the x squared alone, so I'm going to divide. That's how I undo times. Divide by what I want to cancel, the 5. And if I do that to one side, of course, I have to do it to the other. So at this point, I've got x squared equals negative 65 divided by 5. That's going to give me a negative 13. All right, once I have my x squared completely alone, I have to ask myself, how can I undo a square? How do I get rid of that little 2? And hopefully you're thinking, well, we take the square root, hence square root method. And when we do that, it undoes the little 2, okay? And all we have left is just the x completely alone. But if I take the square root of one side, I have to take the square root of the other. Some of you may be thinking, okay, well now we've got this negative 13 underneath a square root. So using what we learned about our imaginary numbers, which if you have not viewed that video, you definitely want to view my imaginary numbers video. Um, otherwise, this won't make a whole lot of sense. So we've got at this point x equals, we can separate this in the 13 away from the negative. So remember doing this, we take the square root of 13 times the square root of negative 1. It's like we separated the 13 and the negative away from each other. Okay, now square root of 13, I could look at it to see could I simplify this radical? And I actually can't, okay? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say simplify the radical, then you definitely need to watch my video on simplifying radicals, okay? But for the meantime, square root of 13 is actually in its most simplified form, okay? If I were to break it down, the only two factors I could pull out would be 1 and 13. So that doesn't get me anywhere. So at this point, I've got x equals. I've got this negative 1, square root of negative 1, which, remember, reduces to just i. And then I've got times the simplified radical, square root of 13. But don't forget, any time we take a square root of something, we have to say plus or minus. Now you may be thinking, well, you didn't do that in the imaginary numbers video. And you're right, we didn't do that plus or minus because in that video, we were just simplifying expressions, okay? Here, we're actually solving to get answers. So at this point, my final answer would be x equals positive or negative i square root of 
13, right? I don't have to have the time symbol. It's implied that this is I times square root of 13. So this would be your final answer. This answer is really two answers. And sometimes you can write them, if you want to, you can always write them separated. X equals, we've got positive I times square root of 13. That's the plus one. And negative I, that's the negative, times square root of 13. Okay, either one of these answers are perfectly acceptable ways to write it. I definitely prefer the first one because I think it looks cooler and it's less writing. All right, let's look at an example. We're gonna solve this one through the quadratic formula. So we definitely wanna remember, what is the quadratic formula? We need to have that memorized. So remember, that's our negative B. I'm gonna write it, I'll write it over here. Negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what would be my A, what would be my B, and what would be my C. Now you may notice here, look, this is not set equal to zero, okay? And I can't use the quadratic formula, I can't use this, until this equals zero. So I need to rewrite this. I need to move this five over to the other side so I have an equal zero. So at this point I've got eight X squared now, I can't combine that five with either of those because they're not like terms, so that's okay. We'll just write plus six X plus five equals zero. Okay, now I've got it in standard form, equals zero, so I can now use that quadratic formula, and I always forget this little X equals there. That's my fault, because we are solving for X. So my A would be eight, my B would be six, and my C would be five. So let's plug this into the quadratic formula. So we've got X equals um, negative B, so negative six, plus or minus square root of six squared, B squared, minus four times A, eight, times C, five, all over two times a eight. Okay, remember when we're using the quadratic formula, the first thing we wanna do is simplify what we have underneath the radical. So let's see, this would be our six squared minus four times eight times five. Okay, and we get negative 124. So we've got x equals negative six plus or minus the square root of negative 124 all over two times eight is 16. Once we see that square root of the negative 124, we have to ask ourselves, okay, let's separate the negative from the 124. And then we'll look at, can we simplify that 124 radical? And I'm sure we can. At this point, I've got x equals negative six plus or minus square root of 124 times square root of negative one all over 16. So now we know that this reduces to i. But let's think about that 124. Let's see if we can reduce that. 124, what are two factors that go into 124? Immediately, nothing comes to mind. I know two would work, but beyond that, let me see if there's anything else. So I could do a bunch of guessing and checking, or I could use this great calculator trick. I could go to my y equals and type in 124 divided by x. Second graph, go to your table. And look, so I know one and 124, 2 and 62. I also know 4 and 31. And then that's actually it. I could keep scrolling to look, but that's actually all I'm going to find. I'm going to use 4 and 31. Now I know 4 can break down into 2 and 2. There's a pair. 31 can't break down that at all. So he 
would stay in the box. The only thing I could pull out of 31 is 1 and 31, and that doesn't really help me. I've got x equals negative 6 plus or minus. Now, I've got the 2 that was able to come out. And then I've also got the i, because this reduces square root of negative 1. It's just another way of saying i. And then underneath the radical, I have the 31 that's still stuck underneath, all over 16. So now, at this point, I would want to ask, okay, can I reduce these fractions at all? So can I reduce negative 6 over 16? And can I reduce 2 over 16? A lot of students want to try to add this negative 6 and 2 or negative 6 minus 2, and we can't, those are separate. That 2 is tied to the i and to the square root of 31 through multiplication. I can't just separate them. What we can do is reduce these fractions. So let's bring out our calculator and let's see, can I reduce negative 6 over 16? Let's see. So negative 6 divided by 16. Let's see. So we get a decimal. Math. Enter. Enter. So I see the reduced form is negative 3 over 8. So let's go ahead and reduce that part. So I've got equals negative 3, and then I know my denominator is now going to be 8. And then I have my plus or minus. Now let's see about 2 over 16. Let's see if that reduces. 2 divided by 16. Math, enter, enter, and I get 1 over 8. So at this point, I've got 1 over 8. I still have that i, and then I have my square root of 31. Now, in order to write this in the most official way that you may see on a state or standardized test of some kind, they're not going to put the 1 there. Okay, they're going to put, as their final answer, x equals negative 3 plus or minus just the i. The 1 is understood, so just i square root of 31 over 8. Now this can be written in this way or just like over here it could be written as negative 3 plus i times square root of 31 over 8 and negative 3 minus i square root of 31 over 8. I definitely prefer to write it this way because it's less writing. Let's do one more example. So for this one, we're going to do completing the square. I will notice that this is under first glance using our rules of completing the square and our rules of solving with that. At first glance, this looks like it might be a perfect square trinomial. So let's see if it is. I would want to look back. If you were not sure what I'm talking about, definitely check out that video where I discuss perfect square trinomials. But I would want to first say, okay, is the first term and the third term, are they perfect squares? So is the first term is 1x squared. Well, is 1 a perfect square? Yes. Okay, it's 1. x squared is a perfect square. Is 36 a perfect square? And we would actually say yes, it's 6. So 30, so so far it looks like this might be a perfect square trinomial. But we have that part 2 we have to ask too. Could I take the square root of the first term and the square root of the third term, multiply them together, times them by 2, and get the center number? So let's see. Could 1 times 6 is 6. Now, what is 2 times 6? Well, that would be 12. So is 12 our center second term? No. So because it's not, this is not a perfect square trinomial. And that's okay. We're just going to move on and complete it using completing the square. Okay, so remember for completing the square, we want to have the c value over on the other side of the equation. We want to have a big box here. So in order to me, for me to put a box there, i got to clear some space out. So remember, we want to subtract 36, subtract 36. 
and we would have x squared minus 8x. We've got this plus and then a big box here. That's what we're going to be filling in. Equals 0 minus 36 is negative 36. So now what would go in that box? Well, remember, we take our b value, negative 8. I divide it by 2, and I square it. So let's use a calculator to simplify that. Negative 8 divided by 2 squared. And I get 16. So I know 16 is going to be that box term. But if I'm going to add 16 to this side, I have to do it to the other side as well. So let me rewrite this. I've got x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals, what's negative 36 plus 16? Well, let's use our calculator. Negative 36 plus 16. Negative 20. I build my twins. And I say, what's the square root of my first term? x square root of 1x squared is x. So I have x and an x. Remember, the sign that goes in between my first and second terms is what goes in each of these. So it's minus, so I put a minus and a minus. Lastly, I say, what's the square root of my third term? What is the square root of 16? It's 4. So I have 4 and 4 equals negative 20. Now I have to make that jump and recognize, okay, anytime I have a binomial times the same binomial, I can rewrite this as x minus 4 squared equals negative 20. It's that kind of jump that you have to make when we're doing completing the square. So how do I get rid of the little 2? I take the square root gets rid of the little 2, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So at this point over here, I just have left x minus 4 equals, and then square root of negative 20. So this is where that non-real solution comes in. I know it's going to separate to square root of 20 times square root of negative 1. I want to separate the minus, the negative, from the actual number. And then I want to ask myself, can I break 20 down anymore? Can I simplify that? I definitely think I can. Let's try. So two terms that go into 20, two factors, I immediately think 2 and 10. And then 2 is broken down as far as it can go. 10 would be 2 and 5. So I've got a pair here and a no pair here. So 5, he gets a box. So at this point, I've got x minus 4 equals what was able to come out, the 1, 2. Because I'm doing square roots, I do have my plus or minus. The i here, because we know the square root of negative 1 is just an i. And then the square root of 5, the one term that didn't have a partner. I need to add 4 to both sides. I'm trying to get that x alone. I've got x equals. These are not like terms because this has a radical. It's multiplication and a radical. So these are not like terms. So that's okay. I'm going to write the 4 out front. 4 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 5. And this is my final answer. I could rewrite this in two separate statements. I could do x equals 4 plus 2i square root of 5 and 4 minus 2i square root of 5 and circle both because it was just like we did here. We can totally do that or I prefer just to leave this as my final answer. Less writing and it kind of looks cool. Okay, here are three you tries for you guys. I want you to try to solve this one using the square root method. This one using the quadratic formula and this one using completing the square. And each one of them is going to end up with an imaginary number with a non-real solution. So I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.